Welcome to the Abundant Accountant Podcast. This is where accounting professionals just like you learn all the ways to grow their firm, sharpen their skills, and have consistent increasing sales. I cover topics such as detaching from the emotional side of the sale, having paradigm shifts in the most important part of your business, which is the nucleus of your accounting firm, sales, and how to see an objection really as an asset and stop giving away your time for free for those that don't deserve it. So you can actually get paid your value and your worth and grow your top line revenue. You'll learn tips, sales strategies, as well as hear from personal interviews from successful accounting professionals. This podcast will show you exactly the blueprint on how to create the firm and life of your dreams full of abundance. Welcome to the Abundant Accountant Podcast. I am so happy to be back with you. And today we have a very special guest. Our special guest is Jackie Mayer. She's a CPA, CCA, and a doctoral candidate. And she is the president and founder of Mayer Tax Consulting LLC in South Lake, Texas. She is also a top rated speaker and one of a few female thought leaders with 4,000 members in her accounting firm influencers Facebook group. So make sure to join that. And her passion is combining technology with unparalleled client service. And it came to her at a young age of 27. And she is one of the youngest female CPA owners in the Dallas Fort Worth area. And giving back is one of Jackie's top priorities. So she works with local and global nonprofits as an educational and equality initiative leader. Jackie has two kiddos, three dogs, and her loving husband, Mark. And she attends Life Church and travels the world as much as possible. But before we welcome Jackie to the show, I know that a lot of accounting and tax pros think that increasing their fees to their current clients will lose them clients resulting in lower revenues. And I'm sure that like discounting your fees, getting as many clients as possible and sending out proposals and quotes might work. But that's for anyone who, you know, wants to increase their firm revenue by working a lot harder, taking on new clients really slowly and with a lot more struggle. But the simple fact is that the clients that I work with at the Abundant Accountant Empire, they triple their base fees and get paid first and upfront without ever having to chase clients down for payments or having accounts receivable ever again. And if you want to see how other accounting and tax pros are doing this, register for my brand new masterclass at theabundantaccountant.com forward slash masterclass. And it's an investment now to provide a lifetime of increased revenue without taking on more hours or having to get more designations and qualifications. So once again, it's the abundantaccountant.com forward slash masterclass, and it's a completely free training. So make sure to register as slots fill up quick. Now let's welcome Jackie to the show. Welcome Jackie to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here with us again on the Abundant Accountant Podcast. And for anyone that might not know you, could you share one minute of who you are and where your firm is and also that you have this amazing Facebook group for accounting professionals, so they should definitely join that. So uh, could you just share real quick? Of course. Yes, the Facebook group is called Accounting Firm Influencers. So we have almost 5,000 accountants that has organically grown where we talk day to day about best practices, tax planning, um, all kinds of things related to the accounting world. So thank you for bringing that up. Of course. Yeah, my name's Jackie Meyer and I'm a CPA. I've owned my own little boutique CPA firm for almost 12 years now in South Lake, Texas, which is a suburb of Dallas. And about five or six years ago, I decided I was done with running a traditional blah practice. And so I completely converted with the help of my business coach, Chuck Bauer, to value pricing packages around tax planning. And so I'm a big tax planning geek. 
And we were able to triple fees based on that and equally decrease my time to where I'm now actually only spending a few hours a week in my firm. Awesome. So with all that extra time, I decided to start coaching other accountants. So I have my certified concierge accountant coaching program. And then during COVID, I developed a software product called Tax Plan IQ. So I have three businesses I run. I have two small children and a wonderful <laughs> husband. And so, um, yeah, trying to keep up with it all. I know. I always call Jackie. She's like a superhero. She's a super mom, super business owner. Well, three business owners. She's the super leader. And today, that's what we're going to be really focusing on is I think a lot of people listening, Jackie, struggle with, you know, I I have so much work. Uh, I need to hire more staff. I need to hire more on my team. I can't find any good talent, Michelle. There's no one like me. I, I have to do all the work because otherwise I end up reviewing everyone else's work and it's never right. And I shouldn't have hired anyone anyway. So I might as well do it myself. And then we have these, conversations in our head. And I think today's conversation will be really interesting and really valuable for each of the listeners. So make sure you have a pen and paper because we're going to talk about how love can help in this department and leadership in something special called May Rocky leadership. So um, that's, that's what we're going to dive into today because I know that staffing and hiring the right team and doing it a certain way, there is an art form to this. So Jackie, super happy to have you here again on the Abundant Accountant Podcast talking about this really important topic that I think, you know, there's a lot of people that aren't really willing to just, you know, like you didn't want to keep clients around for cheap and you've raised your fees, you tripled them and have been able to step away. I think a lot of people want to be able to deliver more in productivity in a much less amount of time? And how can they be compensated the same to do that? Or even better, right? Or even better. even better. Which is what happened when I did that conversion. Yeah. So gosh, lots to say just based on this little <laughs> introduction so far, but I have a team of a dozen staff. They're all okay. virtual across the U.S., and it, I have learned the hard way from doing everything wrong in how to become a good leader. And so a couple years ago, I decided, you know what, I'm tired of trying to figure this out on my own. I'm actually going to pursue a doctorate in strategic leadership. And so I'm currently still doing that. And I kind of became obsessed with these ideas around what makes a good leader, um, leadership theory is something that is really hard to define. Um, what's a good leader? What's a good follower? How does this all come together? And through my studies and all my writing, I have to write like 3,500 words a week doing this. Yeah, yeah I know, right? Oh I've my God, across. my fingers would fall off. That's a lot of writing. <laughs> I love it. I'm such an introvert at heart and I love writing. It's just a great way to get those words out on a page. Um, wow. But I've kind of developed my own leadership theory called this May Rocky Leadership. And so it's all about love leadership, which is so counterintuitive to our industry for us left brain thinkers. And we're so task oriented. But I know even for myself as that like introverted, introverted left brain accountant, I have got to refocus on the love and I've got to integrate mm -hmm. what I care about with my work. And yeah. so that's what Meraki is all about is pouring your heart and soul and love into what you do and, you know, having your team do the same. And so I've learned definitely several different lessons along the way there that we can talk about today. Well, let's yeah, I want to talk about the lessons you've learned, because I think it's really important to understand how you shared earlier that you learned the hard way. So if you had to break down and like bullet point for all of the left brain listeners right now. Can you share all of the hard ways that you had to make these lessons or how you learn these lessons? And also, have you thought about what those lessons cost you that said, I need to make a change and then go into this deep dive that you're you're on this new journey right now? What can you share with us, you know, five to 10 of those lessons that you had 
that you're like, this just isn't working. And you got so frustrated to the point where now you're, you know, getting your doctorate in leadership. Yeah. So I don't know if I have an exact five to 10, but I'll definitely try. (laughs) So the first thing that comes to mind would be the fact that I tried to retain control and do all the work myself for way too long. Mm -hmm. And it almost drove me insane. And the only thing that got me out of that was having a family, to be honest. So, you know, I could have been a workaholic till the end of my demise um, if I hadn't have had children. And so I had my first daughter in December of 2013. And I have a really wonderful, supportive husband who was able to take some time off. But hey, I didn't take any time off. I was breastfeeding. I was, you know, just trying to work like four or five people's jobs at one time and not hiring the people that I needed to hire to have an appropriate staff level. And so I really ran myself ragged. I think I, you know, uh, developed some mental challenges, brain fog and things that I'll probably never recover from, but things that I've tried to overcome since then. And I realized how much I need a team, how much I need to trust a team and how much I need to make sure and align, um, you know, my leadership style with the people that I'm leading as well. And when you realize that, how come before you didn't think you wanted the team or needed it when you tried to retain control over everything and every element in the business? And I think a lot of people who have a firm or who are in a job with a firm on the side thinking I can't do both for much longer, um, you know, how do you, how did you relinquish that control and realize that you can't work yourself to death? And, you know, like you said, you still have maybe some brain fog, uh, leftovers or some other leftovers that have trickled in. But what do you think that is that has you want to just hang on? Because this is the biggest thing that I hear from most accounting and tax pros? Well, I know for me, it kind of goes back to like the way I was raised. I mean, honestly, my side of the family definitely has, um, has had its struggles and I didn't really have, you know, a great solid family system growing up. And so trust was not something I ever really knew or understood. And so trusting people in my team, oh my goodness, that would be the last thing I want to do, right? I just want to do it all by myself. So yeah. no matter how you were raised, I think we all have a bit of you know trust level issues there. And that's why I kept trying to retain that control. But then I just realized like, this is going to drive me crazy. This is literally <laughs> yeah. going to drive me crazy. I have to stop doing this and I have to trust other people. And then I was kind of forced into it too. So I keep saying like I was forced into it with a child. I was forced into it this way. But sometimes you need those big like kind of rock bottom moments to um, to to get on a better path. And um, I didn't hire a tax manager until 2019 is when I finally get handed off the reins to like running the company, so to speak. And that was kind of forced too because my sister, my only sister – fell and had a severe brain injury and yeah. she was in the hospital for six months relearning to walk and talk and she was in Florida. I was in Texas. I was going back and forth to visit her and I realized like I have to step away from the company to help her and get her better. And I literally interviewed Veronica, who's our tax manager to this day, sitting at my sister's bedside, um, you know, for her to learn how to talk again. So she would never remember that because she was in like an induced coma at the time. But I was kind of forced to trust Veronica. And luckily, it all worked out. You know, we do a lot of personality testing to make sure in our company that um, our strengths align, that we aren't all exactly the same. You mentioned earlier, oh, well, no one can do it just like me. Well, no, of course not. But you don't (laughs) want everyone to be just like you. You want to focus on everyone's different strengths and bring things to the table together, right? Right, yeah. Otherwise, it would be really probably boring and everyone would butt heads if everyone was identical and the same. Exactly. I don't need another Jackie, that's for sure. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) that would be a lot of energy in one place, even though you say (laughs) Jackie says she's introverted, everybody. We met many times in person, not at all. She's out on the dance floor. She's talking. She's at all the happy hours. I'm like, Jackie, I think I'm more introverted 
And I used to be a hundred percent extrovert, but now I'm a hybrid. I I like to call myself hybrid. But why don't <laughs> um, share with us some of the other lessons learned that that come top of mind, so we can then you know transition into this love department and the trust because. Um, you know, not everyone gets forced into it. You you definitely did with the tax manager and having to slow your roll with your two kiddos. Um, but what other lessons learned did you have where you said, you know, I need to make a shift in my leadership? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I thought that leading was all about tasks and efficiency. And that's really easy to do again, you know, as an accountant, right? But leadership is so not about that whatsoever. It's not about the efficiency. It's about the effectiveness. And the way to get effective workers is through, um, you know, this Meraki leadership concept, I believe. And so leadership's really more about wholeness. It's about loving ourselves. It's about loving those closest to us and loving those in our organizations as well. And we really need to normalize that word love in the workplace. It's become this like taboo thing where you feel like it's romantic or something. And there's nothing romantic about it. It's just about, um, you know, going back to who we are as core human beings. And we all want to be loved in the workplace or outside of the workplace. And that's how, you know, my team has grown and really, you know, been loyal. Mm, yep. So, so realizing that it wasn't about just all the tasks and efficiencies, which we think it is, that would be the logical thing and realizing it was about the effectiveness. Did you think of any, like, if you can recall back to when you were very task oriented and is this efficient or not, did you have a lot of turnover? What were some of the costs that you had where you were like, this lesson's just okay, I get it. I see it. I have to make a change. I can't keep going this way. It's just not working. Yeah. Yeah. So when you're hiring people to be efficient taskmasters, so to speak, you're not aligning your why whatsoever. You're just hiring and firing and just going, 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 trying to get things done. And that's never going to have anyone stick around. So I'm a huge fan of like Simon Sinek's TEDx talk, Start With a Why. And when I first heard it, I thought this is what's been missing at work in my life and in everyone's life, it really gave meaning to work. And so he stated, people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. And that was really profound to me. And it really helped me kind of reanalyze like, what is my why? Why am I here? What am I doing? And does that why align with my team? And so we actually hire, fire and promote based on our core values at the firm and core values are, it's a funny thing because it's so corporate and people think, Oh, yep. I hate corporate stuff like that. Yep. But it's so imperative to just get out on paper or to other people. Cause they can't read your mind what the core values are of the company. Like what are those minimum standards for someone to work for and with you? And so we developed those actually pretty recently. It took a while for us to get those right. And um, we measure everybody based on those. And so you can get like a plus or minus sign or like, you know, just kind of equal uh, whether you're meeting the, uh, the different core values of our company. And then Mer Meraki is actually one of them. You know, we're all in. You get us all every time. We're passionate about the tax industry. We're passionate about what we do. And if you're interviewing a new hire and you say that, you're going to run off all the people that have absolutely like no passion for what you do and <laughs> could care less, right? They're like, oh my gosh, this is way too intense for me. I'm out, right? Right, right, right. Can you define what May Rocky means for everybody listening? Yeah, so it's pouring your heart and soul into your work or what you're doing. And one of my staff actually told me about it several years ago. She, we were all like chatting on instant messenger or something. And she's like, Jackie, this is so you may Rocky. And I'm like, what is that? Uh, like, it's a Greek word. Okay. And it just means to pour your heart and soul into what you do. And so I was trying to think of like, what is this love leadership theory that I'm like trying to put together here? And it all came back to that one word that may Rocky. 
Wow. I love it. Yeah, I didn't. When I was in Athens, I didn't hear that word. So I must have missed it. <laughs> yeah, no, I love it. OK, so so why don't we transition into May Rocky and what you do to hire, fire and retain your staff and how you lead your staff into, you know, some actionable steps for someone listening who's having this struggle with their team or lack of team because they they feel like, oh, there's no good talent out there, Jackie. I don't know how you found 12 great people and they all re- work remote. Um, you know, no one does the work like I do, right? When you're task and efficient oriented versus effectiveness oriented. Or, you know, they're thinking like, I, I just have to do it all. And they weren't forced into something else like you were with your kids and what happened with your sister. And you were forced into a letting that trust go into someone else's hands to show you that they can take some stuff off your shoulders. So um, what would be like the first actionable thing um, someone should do today? I, I, I definitely heard write out your why. So I would think that's one of them. I also heard your core values. So can you share some of your core values so we have some examples? Sure. So yeah, again, these are like our minimum measurable standards for who fits in at our companies. And so the first one is no status quo. We resist the acceptance of the status quo and our business is built on innovation and we aren't going to do things because it's always been done that way. So you got to be innovative to work with the Meyer Tax, Tax Plan IQ, or certified concierge accountant teams. And then number two is getting it done, dot, 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 well. (laughs) So we get things done using the best and the brightest. Your time and our time are valuable. Strategy is always used. And we embrace technology. And then number three is being kind. So upright kindness matters the most in our relationships and every human being should be respected and we're not going to move or operate in gray areas there. So humble candor is practiced. And then Meraki, we're all in. You get us all every time. We're (laughs) passionate about our industry. And the last one, the fifth one is having a positive perspective. So we try to enter every situation with that positive perspective and gratitude is practiced as, you know, as much as humanly possible. So we share those with any, you know, potential hires. You could even put it in your job ad if you wanted to just kick off on the right foot. (laughs) Not Uh, waste any time with any uh, people that will probably discount and disqualify themselves so you don't even need to waste your time with them. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I remember one time I did a job ad and I was like, here's all the things we don't want. We don't want someone that's going to do this, 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 or this. And it actually brought some really good candidates because, you know, again, they're not going to waste their time with you if they know that you're not going to put up with nonsense. Right. And you yeah. really got to align all that. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. So that's kind of the first pillar. There's kind of these two pillars to Meraki leadership. One is aligning your why and those core values. And then the second is really cultivating trust. Mm. And so that's important because at the end of the day, you obviously can't do it all. And you need a strong and competent team behind you to accomplish the company's vision. And so you do that by giving people freedom. And I think that trusting employees and staff to do the jobs they were hired to do is really, really important. And this is funny because honesty and trustworthiness are actually different things. And I didn't realize this until recently. So I personally, like my personal ethos is that I want to be extremely honest with everybody. You know, I want to be an honest person, transparent person, but that wasn't coming across with my team because I wasn't being trustworthy with my actions. So let me give you an example of that. Okay. So I would assign work to a team member and then I would swoop in and undermine them and try to actually like do part of the work myself. And I thought I was actually being a hero. I thought I was helping them, but it actually was completely undermining them in their role. And then they didn't feel safe. They didn't feel responsible for the work and they didn't feel safe that they could get the work done effectively. And so it was like completely backfiring on me. 
So I'm realizing that I really have to give my team their own freedom to, you know, get the work done that I'm assigning them to do and let them run with it. And so things have changed drastically at the company in regards to who owns what and making sure everyone's on the right seat on the bus. And that if you own it, you know, you're going to keep it and you're going to get it done. And so that's been a really big change for us. Yeah. And I'm curious, how did that create abundance in your firm? Oh, gosh. Yeah. I mean, I think if everybody feels like they are contributing now, Mm -hmm. right? So everyone feels like they're making a difference. Because they're actually, you know, assigned things and they're getting them done themselves and they feel like they're accomplishing and making a difference. So it's really, really changed our whole culture. Yeah. And has it affected uh, your top line revenue? Well, (laughs) I mean, you know, value pricing in itself tripled our revenue. So I can't say enough good things about value pricing, tax planning. It's like the the best way to have a win win relationship with all of your clients. Um, But 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 especially from the team aspect, right? Like implementing Mayrocky, doing the two different main pillars, right? Aligning with um, your why and the core values on the hiring side letting go of the truck or not letting go, but trusting others that they can fulfill on the tasks and projects you give them. And like you said, giving people that freedom, which allowed you to start, you know, not only your firm, but the coaching company and well, yeah, the software. I get to back, right. So right. maybe it's not about top line revenue. It's more about like, net revenue and how many hours I had to put into everything. So yeah. if if I was still trying to run the show, I would be working the same 60 hour weeks or whatever, you know, the typical tax accountant works and I'd be miserable. Yep. And so I had to give up that control and I had to kind of follow these different leadership lessons to um, regain my time and to really be able to focus on things that I'm passionate about. Yeah. And I think that's, really right with also having your team being able to contribute and having them make a difference is really the abundance factor because you're no longer doing those 60 hour weeks and you were able to scale growth but also scale yourself back while having this team of 12 so I think it's pretty impressive Is there anything else, Jackie, that you would like to share with the listeners of, you know, any other actionable task efficient steps that they can take today in in making the shift for their own firms so they don't feel like they're, you know, a slave to, to their own firm or feel like, you know, how did I get myself stuck into this job? And yeah, you know that feeling. So. Oh, for sure. I remember it all too well. So yeah, I mean, I think we're we're in this what what we call the great resignation right now. I think 95% of people per a monster.com article this summer were looking or reevaluating for new jobs, which is insane. 95% of people are rethinking their life. And I know, you know, COVID had a lot to do with that too. But, you know, we have to think outside of the box when it comes to leading our practices. And we have to think outside of this, like, you know, task driver efficiency thing and think more about how we can be effective. And so I would just encourage everyone to really take to heart what I said about bringing love into the workplace and, you know, love for your neighbor is really what all that I'm advocating for and all that I think that we all want on a day-to-day basis to, Mm -hmm. you know, get and keep some of the best talent that you possibly can. Yep. And, um, I, I mean, I think that article, that's crazy, 95% of people, but I think it also shows that if you can capture that 95% who are looking for something better and get clear on your why and what you don't want and create a different kind of job ad that you've never created before and getting really clear on core values, you could capture someone who isn't satisfied with their current position. And, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of people here listening that might feel that way in their corporate job right now at the firm you're in being worked like a dog or, 
you know, whatever it may be. And that people want to be not only have autonomy within it, but people want the freedom, even if they're in a job they, to have that uh, not only freedom, but sense of autonomy within the workplace to be autonomous, but yet be a contribution to the bigger vision. For sure, for sure. But yeah, thank you so much for letting me share these ideas with you of today. Of course. Yeah, it's always great to have you here, Jackie. I think this was a, you know, a really, really important conversation um, for this time and what people are going through and the struggle that a lot of firm owners are having with the talent and the team in place. And I think you shared a lot of great insights and some great actionable steps to make it happen and put your new job ad up on Indeed and focus on your leadership. And we can't wait. I can't wait till you have your doctorate. We'll have to have you back and talk about what what other insights you've learned. So thank you so much for being here with us today. And um, it's always an honor to have you. Same here. Thank you so much, Michelle. What an amazing episode with Jackie talking about, you know, all that stuff that we normally don't talk about. But I think as Jackie reiterated, that 95% of employees are looking for something else. They're looking for something more, something richer, something they can be a part of so they can be heard and understood. And I can't agree with Jackie more. I think I've mentioned this a few times here on the Abundant Accountant podcast that, you know, I volunteer one day a week at the suicide hotline. And there's a lot of people out there that are not heard. They're not understood. They're judged. And a lot of employees will feel the same exact way. And I know by my week or my work every single week on the hotline that if 95% of employees are looking elsewhere, the, they need to be heard and they need to be understood and they need to not be judged and have that trusting environment so that they can come to you as a firm owner or your boss and be able to share anything and everything that's bothering them. Because I've learned and seen that so many people keep their thoughts and feelings inside and then it becomes like a volcano and that volcano will explode. And if anything we've learned in the last two years with the pandemic and anything else, is that depression's a real thing. And that if people are spending most of their time anywhere from eight to nine hours a day working with you, it better be enjoyable. So make sure to really take this episode to heart and write out your why, write out your core values. Go to your latest job description and flip it on, on top of its head and list out all the things that you don't want in a team member And have these new interviews and conversation from a different place, from the place of love and that you're going to be that trusted leader to hear them out. And I truly believe you want a good staff, pay them two to three times what you're doing. So if you're having a hard time increasing your fees and increasing your profitability and revenue, then I'm your gal because I know and I know everybody thinks the way to get more clients is to, you know, do some free work and they'll pay you higher fees later or discount your fees to your prospects and current clients thinking that in the future you could raise them and it will be totally simple. But you know what? The accounting pros and tax pros that I work with, they increase their monthly reoccurring revenue just like Jackie did by as much as three times with very few clients and a very simple method. So if you want to see how other accounting and tax pros are doing this, Register for my new masterclass at theabundantaccountant.com forward slash masterclass. It's an investment now to spend the time and have your notepad ready, but for a lifetime of increased revenue so you can afford and invest in the best employees. Once you've figured out your why, once you've figured out your core values, and you don't need to get more designations or qualifications to increase your firm revenue. So once again, head on over to the abundantaccountant.com forward slash masterclass. Make sure to register and watch the whole thing from start to finish with your notepad and pen. And I will see you there. Whoa.